Hi everyone, as I record this, the G7 meeting down in Cornwall is still ongoing. Um, that's the meeting of the seven, the leaders of the seven largest economies in the world getting together to talk about how we might tackle some of the big problems uh, in the world. And climate change, of course, is big on the agenda uh, at the moment. Now, normally the G7 meeting just kind of passes me by a little bit. You know, there'll be a meeting and they'll talk about things and there's a lot of talk, but then not very much happens. Uh, but this year I've been paying a bit more attention to it because of what's happening with respect to the coronavirus. And, you know, um, obviously those of you who watch who watch this, um, these videos will, will know um, what I think about that already. Uh, but this year it just feels like it's taken on a different tone and it's not just because of all of the the hypocrisy you know they'll they'll socially distance and they'll elbow bump and wear masks for the cameras but then when the cameras are off then they'll you know they'll not social distance and they'll take the masks off and so on um, and it's like this one rule for them and another rule for us but let's let's leave that aside for the time being I think the thing which I found the most creepy about this has actually, um, I can encapsulate that in what Boris Johnson uh, uh, says, the BBC reported Boris Johnson to have said on, uh, I think, the first day. He said this. In his opening remarks at the main roundtable discussions, Mr Johnson said that as the world recovered from the pandemic, it was important to level up across our societies and build back better. He added, I actually think that we have a huge opportunity to that uh, to do that because as G7 we are united in our vision for a cleaner, greener world, a solution to the problems of climate change. And then uh, he carried on, it was important for the world economy to rebuild in a more equal and in a more gender neutral and perhaps a more feminine way after the huge damage caused by coronavirus, Mr Johnson told his fellow leaders. So they want to rebuild and they want to build back better. Now, I, to be honest with you, I find this prospect terrifying. Um, I think the Babylon Bee actually encapsulated, I just saw this earlier, um, people who ruined world's economies gather to discuss how to fix world's economies. And I mean, I think that that put it into into perspective for me, really, that, you know, that this this crisis over the last 15 months has not been caused by the coronavirus it's been caused by our response to the coronavirus to the lockdowns to the incredible kind of disproportionate and you know authoritarian response to the coronavirus which originated with the chinese communist party and now we've got these global leaders the g7 leaders coming together saying oh we need to employ this approach with other problems too like climate change now can you imagine for a second what what um our response to climate change would look like if it was anything like how our our countries have dealt with uh, the coronavirus, you know, that we've been like, for example, as we've seen over the last few weeks, you know, houses that have gas boilers, that you're not going to be able to build a house with a gas boiler, you're not going to be able to sell one with a gas boiler, and so on. It's going to have to be electricity. And it's this kind of very authoritarian approach, which actually is not good for the common man, is not good for, for, for ordinary people. You know, it's not helping people to live their lives. It's actually just this top down authoritarian approach. Now, there's a problem. We're going to solve it. You need to fall in line because there's a bigger problem to solve. And you need to, you know, um, stop with your whinging and with your lives. You need to get with the program. You know, this is something that we need to do in order to combat this this problem of climate change very top-down, very authoritarian. And it, it really, it, it scares me, if I'm completely honest with you, it scares me about this um, authoritarian approach to government. Now, since the start of the uh, the pandemic, I read um, 1984, about a year ago, because I, um, it was a book that um, people told me that I needed to read um, when I was younger. And um, I only got round to reading it last year. And oh, my goodness me, you know, the, some of the things really, the Ministry of Truth, Newspeak, you know, Double Thing, all of those things, it was just so many of the things that Orwell predicted were kind of happening. So it, it scares me. But what I want to say tonight is that I, it's not right to be scared. So as I've been doing these videos over the last few months, one of the things which I've noticed repeatedly is that people who are sceptical of lockdowns tend to be pessimistic. 
There, there aren't many optimists among us, you know, people who think that it will all turn out okay. Most of us think it's all going to end in tears um, and it's going to need some violent revolution to overthrow and, or you know, the government are just going to get worse and worse and worse and, uh, I don't know, we're going to be sent to labour camps or something. I, I don't know that what most people think, how most people think this is going to going to pan out. But I think that there are reasons for optimism and a reason for optimism is because I think we have to believe there is a higher authority than the government. That when the government get authoritarian and particularly when they start trampling over ordinary people then there is a higher authority who who cares and whose concern that is. And I'm just going to read you one short um, passage that I read this morning. So uh, I think about a month ago, we looked at a previous passage in Daniel. And uh, I've been reading through the book of Daniel uh, in the Old Testament um, over the last last few days. And I'm just going to read you a little bit from um, Daniel chapter 4. So just to put this into, into context, Nebuchadnezzar, he is the authoritarian king of the, the empire of Babylon at that time. And they have conquered nations and they have, um, you know, he, um, the, the people of Israel, or some of them have been taken into exile. And Daniel is one of the young men, promising young men who um, Nebuchadnezzar has recognised has got talent and has um, chosen him and some of his friends to work for him in the, in the palace and to be kind of his administrators. And um, you could say that Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians were, you couldn't get much more authoritarian really in, 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 in many respects. It's certainly not like a modern regime, but, um, you know, what Nebuchadnezzar said went. And, um, but then Nebuchadnezzar has a dream and he asks Daniel to interpret the dream for him. And in, as Daniel um, interprets the dream, this is what he says. This is the interpretation, your majesty, and this is the decree the Most High has issued against my lord, the king. You will be driven away from people and will live with the wild animals. You will eat grass like the ox and be drenched with the dew of heaven. Seven times will pass by for you until you acknowledge that the Most High is sovereign over all kingdoms on earth and gives them to anyone he wishes. The Most High is sovereign over all kingdoms of the earth and gives them to anyone he wishes. Now, this is what I wanted to say, that it's easy, I think, from our perspective to look at all of the things going on in the world, to look at the, the way, the authoritarian way that uh, our governments have been treating the, the pandemic and to be scared of it. Which, and I think being scared is a natural reaction. We are human after all. And we might think, well, what, you know, a lot of people have said to me, I mentioned about in my video about a state on fear. and Well, voting doesn't really do anything. That's what a lot of people said in the comments. Um, but actually, I think that there is a there is a higher authority. And yes, you know, democracy is good. But God has the, the authority to bring change. Think about the Reformation, and I did a video on the, the Reformation um, a few weeks ago. But the Reformation, you know, it was this abuse by the priestly, the, the powerful class um, over the ordinary folk, you know, keeping the Bible from them. They, it was only available in Latin. Services were in Latin, so they couldn't understand them. And keeping the keeping this the secret knowledge to themselves and denying the people, you know, communion of both kinds and, and that sort of thing. Uh and it was this very overbearing authoritarian attitude. But things changed and God brought a real change at that point. And he can do it again. He did it in Nebuchadnezzar's time. He did it in the time of the Reformation. He can do it again. So that's my message for this evening, which is don't be afraid of authoritarian regimes. They can only last as long as God says that they will last. And he can bring them down and humble them any time he wants and I think that's what we should be looking for and praying towards which is that the God would bring about a government who actually care uh, about the people and not just about these kind of abstract notions like climate change and um, pandemics and so on but really genuinely want to do the best and love the people who they've been given um, a, 
sort of responsibility for. So I think we should be continuing to pray for a new reformation, but optimistic because it can happen. You know, this is we're not to be pessimistic and and worry all the time about these authoritarian regimes. But I think we should be optimistic and praying for um, for God to, to humble and to, to bring about give give the, the, the kingdom to, to those who will actually serve people rather than lord it over them. So that is my little thought uh, based on Daniel chapter 4. I think Daniel is a great book for Christians to be reading at the moment, by the way. Um, Daniel chapters 1 to 6 in particular, which kind of deal with how Daniel and his friends dealt with being in a hostile environment. And yet they brought real uh, change. You know, they didn't compromise. They stood up for the truth. They stood up for God and things things happened and God defended them. And, you know, it's their example their example is a, a good example. So, yeah, let's let's be optimistic and let's trust in, in God. So thanks very much for joining me this evening. It's been good to be uh, to be with you once again. I like doing videos on sort of different topics and uh, particularly on this Sunday, as I read it this morning, um, I thought I'd do it um, on that. The problem is that there are just so many things at the moment to think about and, to, and what have you. I'd like to talk a bit more about the G7 in due course. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Um, and uh, yeah, don't forget to click the like button. But until next time, God bless.